talked a lot about survival analysis um, and some of the important ideas surrounding that. And then we started to build up the idea of how regression models can be used to estimate the survival function. And we did a big picture overview. Then we looked a bit at the exponential model as kind of the entry level model to, to give us the foundation. And now we're leading our way into cost proportional hazards model. So uh, the big thing with this that we've already talked about is that cost proportional hazards model, it allows the hazard to change over time. It allows the hazard to change over time. So we said the exponential model has a constant hazard. Then we said we can look at other parametric models like the LIBOR or these accelerated failure time models that allow the hazard to increase proportionally with time or decrease proportionally with time. Okay, so this model allows the hazard to fluctuate. It can increase and or decrease as time goes by. But the one thing it does assume is that hazards between groups are proportional, or another way of saying that, that the hazard ratio is constant. The, the example I'm going to use is say we're capping the hazard ratio um, associated with biological sex. So what's the hazard for males relative to the hazard for females. And what cost proportional hazards model assumes is that this hazard ratio is constant over time, or that the hazard for males is proportional to females. So just to give it a, a number, suppose the hazard ratio is two. And that means at any given point in time, a male is twice as likely to die as a female. And this model assumes that that's constant over time. So at any point in time, a male is always uh, twice as likely to die as a female. So just to try and build up the idea of what does proportional hazards mean or constant hazard ratio, what I wanted to do was first go back to ideas we learned in linear regression, then what they look like in logistic, and then how that translates to survival. So trying to take some knowledge we've already built and then transfer that into survival to understand what exactly does proportional hazards mean? Or The way I found it easier to think about is the hazard ratio is constant. So that, that way I found it clear to think in my brain. Suppose we're looking at, and I'm just keeping it generic, um, some outcome, numeric outcome y for some x variable. And suppose we have the regression line for males and for females. And remember, this distance here, the distance between the two, is the mean for males minus the mean for females. And our, here, using parallel lines, right, is what we call no effect modification. Right? The, the difference between a male and a female is the same for any value of x. And to think of when there is effect modification or interaction, we might see something like this. Here's the line for males. And here it is for females. And that effect, the difference between a male and a female, changes depending on the values of x here. Again, that difference in means is growing. Right? The difference in means depends on where we are for x. We saw in logistic regression, we model the log odds of the disease as a linear function of x. So again, we can think of fitting a line for males and a line for females. And by default, we fit parallel lines, right, or no interaction, or no effect modification. The distance between these two was the log odds ratio. Right, where we saw, we took that difference and exponentiated it, it gave us the odds ratio. And again, this model assumed the odds ratio, the odds of disease for male versus female, is the same for any value of x. It does not depend on that x variable. And then interaction or effect modification might look something like this. Where again, the difference in log odds for a male versus female, which we saw was the log odds ratio, depended on this value of x. Looking at survival, 
we're modeling the log hazard um, as a function of x variables. And remember that um, cost proportional hazards model allows the hazard to change over time. You can fluctuate up and down, but for the sake of pinning on to previous knowledge we've built, I'm going to draw it as a straight line. What we're showing here is the long hazard is allowed to change over time. Okay. And it can actually fluctuate up and down. It doesn't need to be a line, but I want to connect the ideas we've learned before about linear logistics to what we're seeing now. And so we fit a line for males and females. And the distance between here is the log hazard ratio. And again, for the same reason uh, we built up previously when we talked about logistic or when we talked about Poisson regression, which I've left out of here. If the coefficient for male versus female tells us how does the log hazard change, exponentiating that gives us the hazard ratio. Let me just label that here. This one is showing proportional hazards. The hazard for a male versus female is proportional over time. Here the hazard ratio is constant. And again, just to go back to what proportional hazards means, if this hazard is 0.5, then this hazard can be 0.25. Right? The top is double the bottom. Then the hazard ratio, hazards can increase as time goes by. So let's say that time t equals 2. This hazard goes up to 0.6. This one would go up to point, I'm sorry, this should be 0.25, not 0.025. If this one goes up to 0.6, then the hazard for females would go up to 0.3. Right? So they are proportional over time. Then suppose at time t equals 3, the hazard for males has increased to 0.9. The hazard for females would be 0.45. So the top and the bottom are proportional, or their ratio is constant. This here is showing the idea of proportional hazards. And again, remember, these in cost proportional hazard model, the hazard doesn't need to be continually increasing. These could be moving up and down, but the distance between the two is the same. If we saw that, say, this is what it looked like for males, and this is what it looked like for females. Then what we're saying is the distance between these two, or the log hazard ratio, depends on the time. Right? Or the hazard ratio is changing over time. The hazard ratio is not constant. So this is going to be non-proportional hazards. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about proportional hazards as we progress through things, so we're going to look at the data set, we're going to fit a model, we're going to talk about what does it mean to assume proportional hazards there, uh, we're going to talk about how we can check if the hazards are proportional over time. If they're not, we're in a situation sort of like this, what can we do and how can we address that? So that's all, all what's coming up. I guess, let me just label some of these here. So in the case of linear regression, we call this interaction or effect modification. And we say that this effect, or I'll just say y1 bar minus y2 bar, the difference in means depends on this value of x here. Same with logistic regression, the odds ratio, or here we've depicted the log odds ratio, but if the log odds ratio changes depending on x, the odds ratio changes depending on x. So here the odds ratio depends on this value x. And what we've drawn here, the hazard ratio depends on time. Or in other words, the variable sex, like biological sex, male versus female, interacts with time. You can, if you're thinking ahead, you can probably already think of what some of the solutions are going to be to addressing non-proportional hazards. If the effect of sex change depending on time, we're going to essentially end up fitting a model that includes a sex by time interaction. Okay, it's a little, a little bit more complicated than doing exactly that, but that's the, the idea and concept. So this is just the kind of intro overview. What we're going to do is start to um, 
get into some of the details of all this. So you may recall when we started talking about Cox proportional hazards model, we said that essentially we're modeling the log hazard using the log baseline hazard function. And again, we don't need to get too stuck in the details of this right now, but essentially what we said was this baseline hazard function, uh, we can see it's a function of time, so this allows the hazard for the reference group to increase or decrease to fluctuate over time. So this plus v1 x1 plus v2 x2 all the way up to vk xk. So again, this is sort of acting like uh, what previously was thought as being an intercept term for the regression model, except now this intercept is a function of time. It can increase or decrease, it fluctuates over time. Or we also said we can think of this rather than on the scale of the log hazard, we're modeling the hazard as the baseline hazard. So again, this is the hazard for the reference group. It's a function of time. It's allowed to fluctuate over time. So this is sort of acting like the intercept term, right? The hazard for the reference group and it's a function of time. So it can increase or decrease, it can fluctuate over time. And then an exponential function, x1, x2, up to xk. So um, the kind of big innovation with Cox's proportional hazards model is he came up with a way that we can estimate these coefficients. So we can estimate the v1, v2, up to vk, the model's coefficients, without having to specify what this baseline hazard function is. Okay, so in other words, the hazard is allowed to fluctuate over time, increasing or decreasing, and we don't need to specify how it fluctuates over time. We can still estimate all the model's coefficients. So the way I sort of thought of that is sort of like fitting a regression line. So here's the simple x, y. And we're fitting a regression line where we estimate the slope without estimating the intercept. Okay, so we don't know if the intercept is here or up here, but we do estimate the slope. Came up with estimating the rest of the coefficients without estimating the what acts as the sort of intercept term or the, the baseline hazard. But the assumption there is that these two are equal distances apart. Okay, and as time fluctuates, as we mentioned, these may actually bounce around however they want, but the distance between them is going to be the same. Right? They're going to be proportional on the scale of the hazard or equidistant on the scale of the log hazard. So what we're going to do um, following this video is look at that uh, Stanford heart transplant data set. We're going to look at fitting a Cox proportional hazard model in R, um, kind of what some of the components there and so on. And then we'll come back to talking about Cox proportional hazard model. What exactly are, are the assumptions? Proportional hazards is one of them. How can we check that if it's met? If it's not met, how can we address violations of that assumption? So that's all coming up. But first, let's just take a look at fitting this model and interpreting some of its components in R. Stick around, guys. There's more to see, and please stay safe.